Actually, and Lockie, yeah. um, we've got a big painting job to do, sign writing painting job to do at a uh, an old picture theatre at South Hurst for a civic video mob bought a whole theatre and they got us in to paint everything and sign write everything. So I got all the <laughs> painters that I knew, which are all folk singers and yeah. <laughs> Johnny Clark was there, and I'm telling you because the, uh, it was ten clients. And there was uh, uh, Kevin Butcher and the uh, and, uh, and Chris Kempster. Chris uh, All there. Can you yeah. the microphone, please? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what it's all about. Thing. Get on with it. <laughs> so you can imagine the day with John there, Chairman Clough, in charge of everything. And we're, trying to, we're trying to get the job done. And all these singers with us. Morning tea time was amazing with songs and poetry. Johnny singing songs, Tim Connor singing songs and reciting poems and so on. And uh, anyway, one day Johnny comes in, it's a long job, we're there for, for weeks. Johnny comes in <laughs> and he's got this song for us that he's written about us. And he called, he called the workplace the sheltered workshop. <laughs> and this, are you going to sing with me? I will, I'll just tell a quick story about Dad too. Um, it was uh, uh, smelting and hot. Summer back in the late 80s, and uh, Dad just retired from teaching, and he started work with me and Max. Uh, and, uh, and we've got these old 40-foot timber ladders up the side of Armour, all timber down the road here. <laughs> yeah. And he's looking at it, and Dad was colour blind and a bit scared of heights, so it probably wasn't the greatest job for him. But he's, he's looking up at these ladders, and he's going, "I'm going to go up there, don't I, Max?" <laughs> Come on, Dad, I'll cover you, you know, no worries. And he just looks again, he goes, it's either this or Chi-Chi. <laughs> <laughs> Up the ladder he went. <laughs> they were 40-foot ladders in the old days. You could use 40-foot timber ladders, and we had a plank stretched across them, which was bowing, as you can imagine, with the weight that you were working on. Johnny comes in the next day with a drawing he'd done of him and my brother up on this you know, about 30 feet off the ground on the plank. And Hal's my brother, he's saying to Johnny, how you going, you all right on the plank, mate? And Johnny's saying, yeah, I'm fine. But John's got his usual shorts on and a little turd coming out of the <laughs> side of his leg. <laughs> Disgusting man, I don't know how we employed him. Right, okay, so here we go. Yeah, go the, the thing that, um, the, the chains that held the plank onto the ladders were called cripple lines. Yeah. And Dad goes, can we call them something else? <laughs> 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 if I could just say something, um, this, is the this microphone was dedicated to the Hornsby Kuringai. It's never been played before, so oh, oh, man. Oh, we're in the Hornsby um, To be christening it on a night like this, uh, this, this is obviously the, the uh, logo which is on the Hornsby Kuringai banner oh, and on the t-shirts. <coughs> Native band fit there. The HB, <laughs> HBY, and we're talking about in the colours of there. Uh, I've only been making them for two years now, but uh, I have an array and sent some emails around. But uh, uh, I, I used to work on it, well, I used to work on a Friday night in catering at a local college up there near Hornsby, and uh, mm -hmm. every time John was on at the Hornsby Folk Club, I'd miss him. So, um, yeah, I'm just sort of trying to pick up the threads a little bit more about it. Good on you. I just thought I'd never play the microphone before in my life. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is ironic. 
considering I get tanky letters from Carpey and Nigel. You, <laughs> you play the rhythm, I'll play the bass because that thing weighs half as much as this. This is fine to you, mate. Okay, well, this, this is to the tune of um, Big Rock Candy Mountain. You might know that one. Oh, Max's sheltered workshop is a motley bunch of men. Once just a lad, but Max's dad was born in 1910. There's some turn up hungover, there's some turn up still drunk. I'm telling you, they're a priceless crew that don't know the code from the cobalt blue in Max's sheltered workshop. There's a splash of guilt when the bank gets stalled by the rattle paid as workers and they laugh and joke as they send Max broke in the sheltered workshop circus. In the sheltered workshop circus, they're all as thick as planks. When Max explains, they wreck their brains and stand there looking blank. Initiative is missing. Ambition is unknown. They pay wrong lines, they bust the signs. If they lived in Russia, they'd be down the mine. <laughs> it's Max's sheltered workshop. There's a splash of guilt when the bank gets stuck. For the rubble, they do the workers. And they laugh and joke as they said Max broke in the sheltered workshop circus. Yes, they loaf all day, collect their pay, down to the furthest hooray! It's Max's sheltered workshop. Oh, I added a verse to this when Johnny came up with this. The next day I come back with mine. Well, the last verse has been written, cause I just had to add. Although we eloquence ain't good, we rhyming's not too bad. This song is right with slander, and I'm inclined to do ya. I know it's a pity, was a nice little ditty. I hope you don't get overly shitty, cause I intend to sue ya. <laughs> There's a flash of good when the bank is good, but the rabble made of